Okay, now we're looking at Unit 2A, Section 1, Relations. Um, all we're doing is we're talking about how to write different relationships. Some of these you've seen before. The first thing is ordered pairs. Ordered pairs can simply be written as an X and then a Y. So 1, 2, that's an ordered pair. Negative 2, 4 is an ordered pair. And 0, 3. That's a type of relation. Okay? So we could write it this way. We could take that same information and we could put it in a table. And some of you have probably seen this, an XY table. You can do it horizontally or vertically. So I'm going to put an X and a Y. Now it is important that you match them with their partners. They have to be with their partners. So 1 has to be next to 2 because that means X1 goes with 2. Negative 2 goes with 4 and 0 goes with 3. So that's a table. Now the next thing that you may not have ever seen is called a mapping. Now a mapping starts with two Usually two ovals. Let's see if I can make them nice. Oh, look at that. That always makes me happy when I can do that. And there's my other one. Okay, they're not exactly... Well, they're pretty close. What I usually do is I like to list from least to greatest because we don't want to repeat numbers in that mapping. So no repeated numbers in an oval. I'm going to write it down here. Okay, so to prevent that, I always write from least to greatest. So this is going to be my x values, my inputs, and the next one is going to be my y or my outputs. So my smallest x is negative 2. The next one is 0 and then 1. I'm going to do the same thing with my y values. 2 is my smallest, then 3, then 4. Now here's the part a lot of people forget to do. This is not a mapping until you connect the pairs. Negative 2 connects to 4, so we draw an arrow. 0 connects to 3, and 1 connects to 2. That's how we do a mapping. Now there's two more things we need to talk about. We need to talk about the domain, and the domain is the input or the x values of a relation. And again, these don't get repeated. This is also called the independent variable. Okay, the way it is written, we use brackets that look like this. Now, if you can't draw brackets, that's okay. Just do the best you can. Again, I put them in least to greatest to make sure I don't repeat. Negative 2. 0, 1. They are x values from least to greatest, so that is our domain. Our range is the exact opposite. The range is going to be your output, your y values, and it's also going to be called your dependent variable, and we're going to get into that more as we get into more real life examples. Okay. And again, we put that in brackets, we take the y values and we go least to greatest not, and we don't repeat values. So 2, 3, 4. Okay? Let's look at another, t there's only, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how to do this. So the first thing you're going to do, uh, the next example, I'm going to give you some ordered pairs. This time I'm going to give them to you horizontally. Don't get upset, just think what, how is this relationship being presented to me. So let's say I give, here's the given relation, okay, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 4, and 7, 5. And then I'm going to ask you to put this into different forms. I am going to do one more relation here. I mean, one more representation of this relation. The first, let's do a table. You could do horizontal or vertical. 
So I'm going to put an X and a Y. And again, the order here doesn't matter. What matters is that they're next to their partners. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 4, 7, 5. Okay? That's pretty easy. Let's do our mapping. Okay, two ovals. See how nice I can make them this time. Okay, good. That worked out nicely. Oh, they thought it was, oh, I thought I was doing a square. That's how bad that was. Let me get rid of that. I know my dog is barking in the background. I'm sorry. So let me try the oval. Okay. Now remember, this is going to be my X values. This is going to be my Y values. And I don't want to repeat. So I'm going to go least to greatest. My least is negative one. Now there's two of them, but I'm not going to write them both. Then two and then seven. In my y values, I'm going to go 1, 3, 4, and 5. Now we're going to do our connecting. Don't forget your connecting. Negative 1 matches with 1, but it also matches with 4. So there's two hours, arrows there. 2 matches with 3, and 7 maps to 5. Okay? Let's talk about our domain and range then. Our domain is our input, negative one, two, seven. Notice I didn't write negative one twice. I only wrote it once, because when we're doing the domain, and when we write down the domain, we don't repeat numbers. And the range, the output, the y values, are going to be one, three, four, and five. Now we are gonna do a little practice with graphing points, but we're, this is gonna be a quick one, too. so let's do this. And we're gonna do another day of this in case you've forgotten how to do this. In case you forgot, this is your X and this is your Y. So the first ordered pair is negative one, one. Two, three. Negative one, positive four. And seven, five. Oh, I hope I have it big enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Now, some of you may have to do that very quickly, and that's fine. And if you're not sure, we are going to spend a little more time in the next lesson on that. Okay? Let's do one more example. If you think you're good, maybe you just want to watch this real quick. But here's one more example. What if I gave you a mapping to start? Okay, I could do that. I could say, here's the mapping. Let me see how I can do my ovals. That one's good. Okay, and I put negative 4, negative 3, 2, and 0 in the input, in my x values, and 5, 6, and 8 in my outputs. Now, if I don't have arrows, then I don't have a mapping, because then I don't know which one goes with which. I'm going to sew negative 4 goes with 5, but negative 4 also goes with 6. 3 is going to go with 5. 2 is going to go with 6 and 8. I'm making this complicated for you. And zero is going to go to eight. So let's start with the domain and range. If you haven't noticed, you can take the domain and range right from your mapping. So here we go. It's already in order. There's no repeat. So I'm just going to write down my X values from the mapping. <clears throat> That's my domain. The range, I'm going to write down my Y values from my mapping. Five, six, and eight. Now here's where it can get a little complicated. Let's do our ordered pairs. Okay, so our ordered pairs, we have to be really careful here because we have a lot going on in that mapping. Let's start with negative 4. Negative 4 matches to 5, but negative 4 also goes with, yep, it goes with 6. So that's another part. 3 goes to 5, and that's the only thing it goes to. 2, I'm going to have to come down here. 2 goes with two numbers. First it goes to 6, and then 2 also goes to 8, so I have to write that again. And then 0 goes to 8. So here's the ordered pairs, this relation written in order pairs. And then we can do our table. Let's do a horizontal table this time. My x and my y. And again, remember, we just have to make sure the pairs are together. So negative 4, 5 negative 4, 6, 3 goes with 5, 2 goes with 6, but 2 also goes with 8, and 0 goes with 8. So that's what you're going to practice tonight, is representing relations in a couple different ways.